Hello, this is Mr. Smith, and I just wanted to go through a quick example about testing a single mean using the t-distribution, because uh, as we get further into these units, usually I get a lot more questions about this, okay? So let's begin. All right, now the first thing we're going to look at are some formulas that you're really going to need for this section. These are the estimated standard error, the formula for the t-value, and also how you go about finding the p-value. Uh, you can do this either using an online calculator, using a, your normal calculator, or using something like a t-chart. Now let's look at each of these formulas and see what we have here. So in the estimated standard error, you want to know the sample standard deviation and the sample size. When you're looking for the t-value, you want to know your sample mean, your hypothesized population mean, and your estimated standard error. All right. Now, when you get to that p-value, the biggest thing that you have to remember from there are your degrees of freedom. Remember, that is one less than your sample size. All right, so let's get into the example and see what this all looks like. In this example, you hear that the average person sleeps eight hours a day. Now, you think that the average time is probably less than eight hours. So, you decide that you're going to test this out. To test this out, you ask 10 people how long they sleep on average per day. Now from your sample, you get that the average sleep time is 6.5 hours, with a standard deviation of about 2.5 hours. Some questions that we will want to answer about this problem are, what exactly is our null hypothesis? Should we use a one or two tail test? Should we use a z or a t distribution? What is our p-value? And finally, using a significance level of 0.01, what can we really conclude? Let's first start off with the null hypothesis. Remember that when you're trying to state the null hypothesis, this will be the statement that includes the equal sign. Now when we look at the problem, we want to test out less than 8 hours of sleep. And that doesn't really include an equal sign. So we'll actually make that our alternate statement. Now for our null hypothesis, that's going to be the opposite. So our null will be that the mean sleep time is greater than or equal to 8 hours, and our alternate will be that the mean sleep time is less than 8 hours. Next, we'll look at if this should be a one or a two-tailed test. To really figure out, look at our null and our alternate hypothesis. We can see that we're really only interested in an increase or decrease from the hypothesized mean. Now what that is going to tell us is that we really want to use a one-tail test. Now we want to know if we should use a z or a t distribution. In this problem we don't really know what the population standard deviation is, and we also have a really small sample size of only 10 people. Now probably the most important aspect of these two things is that we really don't know the population standard deviation. For this reason, we definitely want to use a t-distribution. Now comes the really important part where we start really using our formulas. This is where we start to find our p-value. To start this process, first we calculate the estimated standard error. So in case you forgot that formula, here it is one more time. In that formula, we'll put in our sample standard deviation and our sample size. After doing so, I computed a value around 0 0.79057. Now with this value, we're going to use it as we calculate our t value. So again, here's that formula. And into it, I've put our sample mean, I've put the hypothesized population mean, and I've also put this estimated standard error. I get a value of around negative 1.8974. Now to finally find the p-value, we need to use a calculator of some sort or use one of those t-charts. Uh, for simplicity reasons, I'm going to use the one found in our online stat book, and you can find that same calculator by using this link right here. Alright, first we want to make sure that all our parameters are correct. So make sure that when you type in your degrees of freedom, that you use our sample size minus one. Also make sure to click the radio button that this is a one-tailed test. After putting in all of our parameters, I'm really interested in the area under the curve, and this gives us our p-value. 
In this case, I found a value of 0 0.0451. So what conclusions can we make from finding all of this information? Well, first we want to compare our p-value that we just found with the significance level that we're testing. And notice how our p-value is actually greater than that significance level. Now what that means in terms of our hypothesis is that we, we actually failed to reject the null hypothesis. And it really helps me out sometimes to look back at what the null hypothesis was to see what I'm failing to reject. In this case, it's that the mean sleep time is greater than or equal to eight hours. Now since I'm not rejecting that, it means that there is insufficient evidence to actually support the claim that the average person gets less than eight hours of sleep. 